I have a problem. I need help. I need professional help. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see here, I have my entire physical TBR. There's actually two piles that you can't even see right now that's up to about here. So in this video I'm going to go through them with you guys because I feel like the book buying's got a little bit out of hand recently and I need to start holding myself accountable and get a little bit embarrassed and show you all of these books. I'm nervous but here we are, my entire physical TBR. So I think I'm going to start off with... Hmm, I'm not sure what genre to start off with. I've sort of put it into piles as to what I think they would go in, what category. Even though I don't store them that way, I literally just store them anywhere, they look nice on my bookshelf, I have sort of put them into the genres that they are. I think I'm going to start with fantasy, spice things up a little bit because I feel like I only really talk about romance on my channel, which is fine because I am obviously an avid romance reader, but we're going to start off with fantasy today. You can already see what this one is, but the first one is Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. This is the second one to Fourth Wing and it is chunky, I will say. And the only reason that I haven't read it yet is because it is so chunky and it is very intimidating to my brain. The next one is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I'm not actually sure why this is in the fantasy pile. It's not fantasy whatsoever. It's actually about Nazi Germany and it should not have been in that pile whatsoever. But I think I just sort of put everything that I didn't know as well in this pile. So not fantasy, but yeah. Another reason why I haven't read this is also because it's quite intimidating to me. It's not my usual genre. It's not my usual thing. I feel like on a perfect day, this will be amazing and I will really like it. But I just haven't found myself in the mood to pick it up yet because I can imagine it's probably quite a hard read. We then have Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I was so close to picking this up about a week ago and I just didn't. I think I'm just too scared about it because it's like one of the most popular fantasies at the moment. There's pressure behind it so I'm like I don't know. I'm definitely going to read it. I can't wait to read it but there's pressure behind it and I'm just not emotionally ready to pick it up yet. We then have the Once Upon a, a Heart. Once Upon a Broken Heart duology slash trilogy. I haven't actually got the third one yet because it's not out in paperback in the UK but I do have these two which is the first two in that little duology but before I read that I also have the full Caraval trilogy as well. I've heard that you don't have to read this one in order to read the other but I kind of do want the full experience. I know that everyone that loves this goes back and reads this anyway so I might as well just start with this. If it's gonna make more sense to me then I will. I also have the first two in the Crescent City series by Sarah J Mass. We all know her by now, we all know the Throne of Glass series, we all know the Akatar series. There's no reason to explain these books. Again, haven't got the third one because it's not out in paperback yet, but as soon as it is, I'll get them. And also, the entire Throne of Glass series as well. I'm not going to hold this up for very long, but again, the only reason I haven't read it is because it is very intimidating to me. I feel like starting the first book is commitment, and I also didn't know whether to start with the Assassin's Blade or Throne of Glass, but I think I've settled on my answer, and I'm not going to say it now because I will change my mind probably, so I'm just going to just gonna leave that one as a little secret. <laughs> so I feel like the Throne of Glass series does definitely take a chunk of my TBR down. I think it's like eight books in that series. So I feel like a pile has already gone, which is good, but we still have more fantasy to go. We have Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I bought this book in 2022 and I've been meaning to read it ever since, but obviously it's a play. So it's gonna literally take me like a day or two to read, probably like a couple of hours. I think these are the last two for fantasy, which are the Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, that kind of world. I'm not actually 100% sure. Grishaverse, is that what it's called? I know nothing about these books, but I'm so excited to read them because I've heard nothing but good things about them. I picked up Six of Crows and then the day before I was on my book buying ban, I was like, I need to buy a book just to like solidify that I'm going to be on a ban for a month tomorrow. And the whole of January, I didn't buy a book. So on New Year's Eve, I went out and I just, this was in the works for like £3 on sale. And I was like, I'm just going to get it, even though I hadn't even read this one yet. But here we are. That's just my problem. We are now moving on to thrillers because the romance section is the biggest section with one, two, three, four, five big piles. I need help. I need professional help. That starts off with the sanatorium, which I had never actually seen before. My granddad and his partner bought it for me for Christmas last year. I think it was, yeah, the Christmas just gone. And I posted about it in like a book haul, immediate TBR kind of video, I think it was. And someone commented that they really enjoyed it. So I was like, oh, I never even thought that this was a thing. Like I didn't know that other people had read it or obviously other people have read it, but you know what I mean? Like mutual viewers that read the same books as me. And I was like, oh, okay, that made me more excited to read it because people wanted to read this and people that had read it really liked it and they told me that they liked it. Actually, it may have been in my Christmas book haul actually and that's why I put it on my immediate TBR. I don't know, but I am planning on getting to this quite soon. 
We then have Suddenly a Murder, which actually got gifted to me off of my Amazon wishlist by Georgia. So thank you again very much for that. I have said a massive thank you to her, but I just saw the note in there and obviously wanted to give that a mention. But I've really wanted to read this from for a really long time. And it's such like a short little read as well. So hoping to like smash it out in like a day or two as well, because it just looks so fun and just right up my street. I love a thriller, like a YA kind of vibe. You know me by now, you know that's what I love. <laughs> Similar vibes, but not the same. Liars Beach by Katie Katungo. This is another sort of fairly short thriller, but it's set around like a swimming pool summer kind of vibe. So I think I'm just gonna wait for when I'm in that summer kind of mood, but I'm not necessarily in a mood for like a fluffy romance where I just want something a bit different. And this is probably perfect because it's summer vibes. I then still have Sunnyville by J.H. Hastings on my TBR. He sent me this himself, contacted me, and I was so excited. But again, I think the only thing putting me off reading this is the size of it. I feel like thrillers, for me, in order to be good, they just need to be quick, snappy, plot twist, jump scare. And this one seems quite long. It's like 400 pages, over 400 pages. Oh my god, it's nearly 500 pages. What does a thriller need to be 500 pages for? And I know that sounds rude and I'm not meaning that I hate towards the author in any way, but it's a long thriller. I haven't read a thriller that long ever, I don't think. I think the average thriller for me is probably about 350 pages at the most. So that's why I've just been a little bit scared because I just know that I'm either going to love it or hate it. This is actually getting ridiculous now. Every single haul I say that this book is on my TBR. And it's The Girl on the Train. My friend Summer actually gave me this copy and I'm going to say it every time. In 2018, we were 16 when I received this book from her. I have since bought her another copy but because I was like, I'm never going to get around to reading this at this point. You can have your own copy. And she said, look, don't worry about it. You can just give me my old copy back and keep the new one for yourself. But no, I kept her old one, which is fine because I spilt a bit of like makeup on it and something when I didn't really care about books. But apparently it's good, apparently it's very very good, so I'm hoping to get to this one soon. But I'll probably read it like October time, I don't know. Now I'm not necessarily sure if this one is a thriller or not, but that's This Is Gonna Hurt by Adam Kay. I'm not actually sure. <laughs> but it's just another one that's like really really quick, really simple. Something that I can potentially read in like one or two days, and I'm really really excited to read it. I then have The Book Club by CJ Cooper. This is sort of about a book club, believe it or not. And the only reason I haven't read this one so far, I think I was going to read it in my reading thrillers for 24 hours video. But I was debating whether to read this one or another one. And the other one just sort of was what I was in the mood for at the time. So that's the only reason I haven't read this, but I'm excited to read it still. I've then got Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell with Pink Sprayed Edges. Another one that I've just really wanted to get to but just haven't had the chance yet. Prioritising other things. I don't know. And lastly for thrillers slash mystery whatever I have the Inheritance Games trilogy. I've recently delved into the Natural series by the same author. Really really enjoyed that so I'm excited to read this one. Again bought this a couple of years ago and I've just sort of been putting off reading it in a way because it's so hyped up. But now I've read the Naturals it's like bumped so far up on my TBR I can't wait. Romance time. I'm going to bring the other two piles over and we will see what happens. I have a problem. I'm going to do these ones all in one just because it's easier. But I have like an array of Christina Lauren books. I have Dating You, Hating You, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating, Roomies and My Favourite Half Night Stand. And I also have an array of Tessa Bailey books. So I have Secretly Yours, Unfortunately Yours, Fix Her Up, Tools of Engagement, Love Her or Lose Her, Need Me, Make Me and Chase Me. Again, other ones that I've just picked up along the way. They were cheap when I bought them and I'm excited to read them. I really like Tessa Bailey as an author. I just haven't got around to them yet. I then have Saving and Redeeming Six and I also have Keeping 13, which I have started. I just haven't actually delved into yet. I actually put it down for a little bit because I felt a slump coming on. I just didn't want to be in a slump in an 800 page book. And also because I love that book. So I didn't just want to be in a slump while reading it. But that's actually at Riley's house. So I've actually still got a couple around Riley's house that aren't even here right now, which I'll get to at the end but I have these ones as well my physical TBR and I also have the hoop series by Kennedy Ryan this is like a basketball romance series and obviously as you guys will know by now probably my fiance is a basketball player so I'm always at basketball games always loving reading about basketball so I really just wanted a good basketball romance series and this one's been recommended to me a lot I then have The Long Game by Eleanor R. Mars. Another one that I'm really excited for is Better Than The Movies by Lynn Painter. This was gifted to me by my friend Charlotte, so thanks again, Charlotte, for that. Again, said a massive thank you, but just wanted to reiterate that. I then have Made in Manhattan by Lauren Lane. In my first 24-hour readathon, I read You Again by her, and I wasn't obsessed with it. Like, I don't really remember much about it, but I did really enjoy it, so I do want to read this again. If it's short, I'm reading it. I don't care. I've just found another Christina Lauren book. I also have Love and Other Words by her, which is a very, very, very popular book, and I still haven't read it. I apologise sincerely to all you Love and Other Words fans. 
I then have Checkmate by Ali Hazelwood. This is another one where I've just wanted to get to it, haven't got around to it yet because Ali Hazelwood's sort of like a hit or miss author for me. I've loved her books, I've not really liked her books very much, so I'm sort of not really sure what I'm going to think of this one so far, so I'm just sort of putting it off a little bit longer, but I'm excited to read it. I then have By the Book by Jasmine Gilroy. This is another one I think I got 20 pages into this and softly DNF'd it in around February time only because my life just got a little bit hectic and I just didn't know what I was doing. I was in a bit of a reading slump but definitely need to get back to it soon. I have the Lancaster Prep series. I think there's like another one or two that I haven't actually got right now because new ones are coming out but I have this entire series. Some of these were gifted to me, some of them I bought myself, so thank you if you were some of them. I am so excited to read this series, like you wouldn't even believe. I feel like, again, I've just sort of like been putting it off because the first two books are really, really chunky, but I just know I'm gonna love it because I've heard nothing but great things about it and definitely gonna read it soon. I feel like I'm saying that about all these books, I can't read them all soon, and I'm stressed. I then have If Only I Had Told Her by Laura Nolan. This is the second book to If He Had Been With Me by her. I'm gonna be very sad, so not emotionally ready for that yet. I then have an array of cowboy romances. I have Done and Dusted by Lila Sage, which I think I'm gonna start tonight, so I'm gonna pop that one back there on my bed. And then I have the Off to the Races series by Elsie Silver. I demolished, demolished the Chestnut Spring series last year, so very excited to delve back into her writing. Now I'm not 100% sure whether this is romance or not, but I have In the Likely Event by Rebecca Yaros. This is also the same author that did Fourth Wing, but just not a fantasy. And do you know what? This one's been bumped up on my TBR quite a bit as well. I read the description earlier. I think I'm going to read it soon. Like, I'm really actually quite excited to get into this. I was excited when I first heard about it, obviously. That's why I had it on my physical TBR. But you know when you just sort of forget about it? There's so many books in front of me. I was just sort of like a little bit overwhelmed with it all. And then I read this earlier. I was like, I'm definitely going to read that soon. That's been bumped up quite high. <laughs> I then have The Summer Girl by L. Kennedy and also The Graham Effect by L. Kennedy. This one's sort of like a spin-off to the Off Campus series by her and this is her Avalon Bay series. This is the final one in that series and I love L. Kennedy's writing so definitely going to be getting to these more probably in the summertime. She gives me summer vibes. I have pretty much every Lauren Asher book barring Throttled on my physical TBR. I read Throttled, literally was, I finished it like last night, the night before. And then I have Collided, Wrecked, Redeemed. I also have Love Redesign, which is sort of, I think it's a start of a new series by her. And then the Dreamland Billionaire series at the bottom, which is the fine print, terms and conditions, and final offer. I've accidentally picked up another L. Kennedy book, haven't I, with that pile? That's not what I was meant to do. I also have Rogue by L. Kennedy as well, apparently. This is a mess. I then have the next two books in the Knockmount series, Knockmount trilogy. I've read the first one, started this one around May last year and then I started doing my uni exam so I got a little bit like overwhelmed with reading and I was just a bit stressed. So I put it down for a little bit and I also have this one. This was gifted to me by my friend Gianni so thank you Gianni. Excited to get back into this. I just think they're quite chunky so it is a little bit intimidating which is probably why I haven't got back into it as of yet and I've just sort of been prioritising other things but I'm definitely going to finish this series this year hopefully. I then have some books by Abby Jimenez. I've got The Friend Zone, The Happy Ever After Playlist and Life's Too Short. I have come to love Abby Jimenez books since around August last year I think I read Part of Your World, January this year I read Yours Truly and now I'm just obsessed and I want to binge every single Abby Jimenez book but I've been trying to put it off to like reading one a month or one every two months because then I don't get through them too quick. <laughs> Final two piles guys, I am excited. <laughs> I have The Dead Romantics and The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. This one specifically, The Seven Year Slip, has gone so viral in the last couple of months and I do feel like I'm the only person that hasn't read it. I then have the, what's this series called, I can't remember, Ever After series by Emily McIntyre. This is sort of like a dark romance kind of retelling vibe of Disney based off of Disney anyway, I don't know. I've heard nothing but good things about this, but again, just haven't got around to it yet. I then have After by Anna Todd, which Riley's aunt actually gave me to borrow. This is her copy. She does really, really want me to read it. So I don't know, again, it's chunky and I'm scared and I just want to prioritize other things I don't know. I then have My Policeman by Bethan Roberts. Again, simply only really bought this because it has Harry Styles on the cover. Who am I kidding? Who am I actually kidding? When am I ever going to read this? I don't know but it has Harry Styles on the cover. And I wanted to read it before I watched the film because obviously he's in the film, hence why he's on the cover. And I still haven't watched the film. Is that criminal of me that I'm a, like the biggest Harry Styles fan and I haven't watched My Policeman? Probably, I don't know. If I'm probably gonna read, I don't, I, mm, I'm just gonna ignore it. I then have You Again by Kate Goldbeck. And this is another one that I plan on reading in the autumn time. Guess what, never got around to it, but I'm saving it. I'm saving it for like September. I don't know. It just gives me autumn vibes, obviously. I believe that this book was actually meant to be in our mystery pile, which is Messy Wonderful Us by Catherine Isaac. 
this is one that I bought because I was doing my three for six pound deal and there was nothing else I liked on the shelf and this is like the next best thing so I just picked it up anyway I don't know if I'm ever gonna get to this I don't know if I'm gonna read it I might donate it I don't know maybe we'll do like a little unhaul or something I don't know if I'm gonna read this I might decide that I really like it I might give it to someone else to read and if they like it I'll read it I don't know or if any of you have read it, please tell me it's good. <laughs> I then have The Road Trip and The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This is another one, The Flat Share, that Riley's aunt gave me to read. I haven't read it yet. But I did have this one on my physical TBR from myself as well. I then have The Spanish Love Deception by Eleanor Armas. This is probably one of the oldest books on my physical TBR, other than The Girl on the Train. And I've needed to read this one. Needed? No, I haven't. I've wanted to read this one for a long time. It's just I heard such mixed reviews about it that I was like, I don't know if I even like... I don't even know if I want to do this, you know? <laughs> but I think I'm gonna read it, I don't know. I've heard great things, I've heard bad things, so I just need to, I need to pick a side. I then have Once More With Feeling by Alyssa Sussman. I've heard quite negative things about it, that's probably why I haven't felt the need to pick it up straight away. But at some point I'll probably get to it, I don't know. I then have The Right Move and Caught Up by Liz Tom Ford. The Right Move is one of them books at Riley's house and this is in the Windy City series and I read Mile High in January and really liked it, so excited to read them too. This one's apparently really good, everyone loves this book. And then I have some Ella Mays books, so I have Charlie Love and Clichés, Marriage for One, To Hate Adam Connor, and I also have The Hardest Fall, which is also, guess what, at Riley's house, because I just pick random books to take there just in case I'm in the mood for them. I don't know. I bought it over for the Super Bowl and then never just, never read it. We are on our last pile, guys. Okay, so I have some Anna Huang books that I haven't read yet. I have the King of Sin series, I want to say this series is called, and then I cannot for the life of me remember what the name of this series is but it's if we ever meet again if the sun never sets if love had a price and if we were perfect i then have with this kiss by carrie hope fletcher this is one that i hadn't really seen anyone speak about but i saw it in waterstones and just thought that i would like it and if it's good i'll let you know i have cleopatra and frankenstein by coca mellas i have underneath the sycamore tree by b celeste this was actually gifted to me for my birthday by my friend marley so thank you marley for my book and an array of other things she got me as well and other books but I haven't read this one yet. I then have Set On You by Amy Leah. This was also gifted to me for my birthday by my friend Jasmine so thank you Jasmine. Again said thank you to all these people but just want to say it again. I've seen so many people read this so many people like it so excited to read that one as well. Who sent me this book? Ellie I remember now. I have Never Ever Getting Back Together by Sophie Gonzalez. This is one that's probably been on my TBR even just mentally for so long now like it was on my Amazon wishes for ages and then Ellie kindly sent it to me. So thank you Ellie for that. I have From Luke Off With Love by Mariana Zapata. Again, heard nothing but good things about this as well. And I'm loving these sort of like ice hockey kind of, ice hockey? Ice skating, figure skating kind of, what am I reading right now? What's this? That's my receipt, okay. Figure skating, that's the word I was trying to think of. I then have Without Merit by Colleen Hoover. This is the only Colleen Hoover book I think other than the Maybe Someday series or whatever that I haven't read yet. And I've had it on my TBR for a long time. I just think it was the one that intrigued me the least, which is why I just haven't got around to it. But I don't know, maybe I'll read it soon. If I'm in a slump, you can't really go wrong if you're in a slump with a Colleen Hoover. I know they're not the best books in the world, but they seem, they're all right. They keep you entertained. And that is what reading's all about. I then have The Summer Switch Off by Beth Recalls. I actually took this one on holiday with me to Morocco when I went on holiday with Riley. And then I just never got around to reading it because I was just reading other things. But I am still very, very excited to read that. Although I have found out since that it's the author of The Kissing Booth. And I didn't know that until now. And I just have like, I've never seen the film, never read the book, but I just have this like undying hate for The Kissing Booth. And I don't know why. And I don't want to talk about it. I just, it just angers me to think about. I'll probably love it. I don't know. But just the thought of it just makes me want to punch someone in the face. I then have The Last Letter by Rebecca Yaros. This is the other book. She actually has a couple of books, but by the author of Fourth Wing. I've just realised you can see my like new piles. Hold on. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. And last but not least, I believe, I have the first three books in the Addicted series. This is a series that are probably one of my most anticipated series. I know I'm going to love it. If I love Magnolia Parks, I'll probably love this because it's messy, it's chaotic, it's sad, it's all of the emotions, it's found family. I just think I'm going to really like this. And I think because I love Magnolia Parks, it just, it makes sense in my brain. I don't know, leave me alone. So they are all the books on my actual physical TBR that I've got on me right now. Oh, Riley's ringing me, hold on. But I do have some photos on my phone of some that I've got of Riley's that I actually left there. And he sent me a photo of them earlier for my brain. I'm going to ring him back. Hold on. Hello. Hello. But what have I got on my TBR? Let me see. 
Okay, so, ah, okay, it's the books that I bought in Brighton in my last, I think it's my last video, my Brighton vlog. I bought Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey, I bought Heartbones by Colleen Hoover, I bought Bride by Ali Hazelwood, and First Down by Grace Riley. And I believe that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm literally just looking at my bookshelf now. Have I missed anything? Now I've got an array of books in front of me and I kind of want to cry. I'm going to have to put these all away now. I've just remembered. And it's nine o'clock at night. I haven't counted them what the hell hold on okay i believe that is around 130 books give or take probably miscounted i don't know that is crazy i need to go on a book buying ban immediately but that is everything for today's video if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up comment down below how many books you've got on your physical tbr if you can count we're all stressed right now we're all under pressure there's way too many books to read in the world but i love you guys lots and i will hopefully see you in my next one Bye bye